you've made it. This is the last topic for MA265 that we uh, learn if you're going in syllabus order. These are the two orthogonal diagonalization questions we've had uh, from the past six finals. That said, the last two finals are the ones that have actually included these questions, so it's pretty fair to say that uh, you can bet on one showing up this semester or future semesters if you're not watching this spring 2020. So 25, let's suppose that we have a matrix A and it is orthogonally diagonalizable where D is a diagonal matrix uh, which has the eigenvalues of A along its main diagonal and Q is an orthogonal matrix. Uh, we, know that, we know that this is this is a diagonalization in the, in the normal way that we think about things because the inverse, so Q inverse, for a diagonal, sorry, for an orthogonal matrix is just equal to uh, Q transpose. So in the following, uh, select a pair of P and Q with the required properties. So we know that this matrix Q will be formed from, uh, will be formed from the bases for the different eigenspaces of our matrix A. And by the spectral theorem of uh, symmetric matrices, we know that all of the eigenspaces of a symmetric matrix or are orthogonal, but if we have any uh, multiple eigenvalues, so it looks like we're going to have a multiple eigenvalue of, well, either one or negative one uh, here, we will have to make sure that the, that the basis factors that we write down for that eigenspace are orthogonal. So just solving for uh, the two eigenvectors for that eigenspace isn't sufficient uh, in this case. So let's, uh, let's get going. We know that in the end we have to normalize all of the columns of Q to ensure that everything is uh, correctly orthogonal and so B we can rule out because you know, those, those are not uh, orthogonal. Sorry, these, these are not normalized, those columns there. Um, and additionally, if this was a real exam, one thing that I would do would be uh, to cross out A uh, just to make sure that we don't, don't go choose that by accident because we're pretty sure that our eigenvalues are negative 1 and 2. That's what we see in uh, C, D, and E. But that could be that could be uh, the other way around. So let's find the eigenvalues of a. We will be solving the determinant of a minus lambda i. So we can just put a negative lambda, negative lambda, negative lambda in here, and solve for our determinant. This this is going to be pretty big. Uh, so we have negative lambda multiplied by the determinant of this matrix minus one multiplied by the determinant of this matrix and plus one multiplied by the determinant of this matrix. Just doing our normal uh, three by three determinant expansion. Expansion. So we have negative lambda multiplied by lambda squared minus one, and then we have minus one multiplied by negative lambda minus one, and then finally we have plus one multiplied by multiplied by a uh, one plus lambda okay let's simplify this down and uh, hopefully we will we will and this is equal to zero by the way where we are solving for uh, lambda equals zero so we get negative lambda cubed uh, minus sorry plus lambda plus plus lambda and then uh, we are adding another lambda and adding one and uh, adding another one and adding another lambda. So we get negative lambda cubed plus three lambda plus two is equal to zero. And just to, uh, just to ensure that our hunch is correct, so we don't have to go and actually factor this entire thing, let's make sure that uh, the factored expression that would give us uh, these three eigenvalues expands out to this. So that would be lambda plus one squared times lambda minus two. That's lambda squared plus two lambda plus one times lambda minus two. 
and well, okay, uh, I have a hunch that when we expand this out, we're going to get negative one times this, uh, which which will have the same roots, and uh, that'll be great. So let's let's expand this. We get lambda cubed minus two lambda plus, sorry, minus two lambda squared plus two lambda squared minus four lambda plus lambda minus two. So we get lambda cubed minus three lambda minus two, multiply that by negative one, and we get exactly this expression we have up here. So we know that our eigenvalues, our eigenvalues are lambda equals negative one with a multiplicity of two and lambda equals two. So let's go with lambda equals two to start off with, because uh, that, that'll be that'll be the easier one to deal with. And let's plug that into a minus lambda i. So for lambda equals two, this matrix is one everywhere else. Okay, so we'll get negative two, one, 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 negative two, one, uh, one, one, negative two. Let's simplify this down. Let's add two row twos to row one. That gives us uh, zero minus four, so negative three and three. We can simplify that to one, negative one, one, negative two, one, 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 negative two. Let's add two row ones to row two. That gives us zero and negative one there. Let's subtract row one. Let's subtract row one from row, uh, sorry, row two from row three. That gives us a zero and a negative one. We can use row one to set that to zero, zero. And that looks good. So because we only have one eigen, uh, sorry, one free variable here, so we'll only have one eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue, lambda equals two, all we can do is just solve for that normal eigen, eigen uh, vector. So because uh, x1, if we set this equal to zero, uh, x1 is equal to one x3, x2 is equal to 1x3, and x3 is equal to 1x3 as well, there is, there is our uh, eigenvector. And if we, if we normalize it to find a, uh, an ortho, well, it's not orthonormal yet, but to find a, a normal basis vector for this space, uh, we get 1 over root 3. So this is, this is our first pair of eigenvectors and, or, uh, bases for our eigenspaces and uh, eigenvalues. Okay, you, you know what I mean. So uh, if we look at our answer choices, that matches uh, with all of them. We, we see that 1 over root 3 uh, everywhere. So then our last real uh, job is doing the same process with lambda equals negative 1. That will give us 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. We can simplify that down to that matrix and write out uh, this as an equation set equal to zero, we get x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to zero. So what they like to do here, the kind of the process that they use for, for finding uh, an, an orthogonal basis for this uh, vector space is let's set, let's set x1 and x2 equal to one. If x1 and x2 are 1, x3 must be negative 2 for this condition to hold. So 1, 1, negative 2 is a vector uh, that works for this. And of course, we'll have to divide by 1 over root 5 to normalize it. But then, oh sorry, 1 over root 6, I, I, can't, I can't really count. There we go. So then what is, what is a vector that is orthogonal to this one? Well, the, the easiest one I can come up with... Um, is 1, negative 1, 0. If we multiply those together, if we multiply, oh sorry, if we dot, take the dot product of both these 1 over root uh, 2, there we go. If we take the dot product, we will get 0, and since both of these satisfy the equation that kind of uh, defines this eigen, uh, eigenspace, then these two are perfectly, uh, perfectly reasonable uh, basis vectors. Uh, or orthogonal basis vectors for our eigenspace, which is exactly what we're looking for because we already uh, are ensured that these two vectors, because they come from a different eigenspace than uh, where we got this one, they will automatically be orthogonal. And you can test that 
And uh, yeah, just, just looking through it, all three combinations of these uh, will be orthogonal to each other. Their dot products will all evaluate to zero. So that means that uh, our columns corresponding to negative one and one should have a, uh, well, there we go, one, one, uh, negative one, and one, one, negative two. That looks good. Uh, what is, what are the issues with these other ones? Well, you could cross off C immediately, not immediately, but um, if, you, if you took a look at it, because what is the dot product of these two columns? It's non-zero. Additionally, uh, the dot product of, you know, the other two, the, the other two do work. Uh, but so, so in the end, that one's wrong because we have two columns that aren't orthogonal to each other. And then looking at D, they have all of all of the correct vectors that we've found, but uh, they're associating them with the wrong eigenvalues. So we want two to be associated with one, 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 uh, where here they have it as related to negative one. So that's that's no good, and we land on E, which is our correct answer. 25, which of the following orthogonal uh, matrix satisfies this, is, this expression right here? So yet again, we are just solving for uh, the matrix Q, which will be formed by the uh, orthogonal basis vectors for the uh, eigenspaces, eigenspaces of this matrix here. So uh, the nice thing about this question, though, is that they provide us with our eigenvalues. Uh, right here, and you could you could rearrange this expression to uh, be in to be in this form a equals uh, q d q transpose. They just they just have uh, moved the the q transpose and the q over to this side, but it's still it's still the same thing. We're still solving for the same thing, and uh, seeing answer choices like this should uh, you know help help you, you you figure out you know we're we're looking for the matrix matrix q and, and Okay, you know, they, they say to look for Q, but whatever. So we know that our eigenvalues are 1, 4, and 4, and that 4 will have a multiplicity of 2. So it's a good hunch that uh, solving for our basis vectors for the eigenspace corresponding with lambda equals 4 will give us our uh, correct answer here. So let's plug that in. Plugging in lambda equals 4, we get negative 1, 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. We can use row 1. Uh, we can add row 1 to row 2 and subtract it from row 3 to set all of this equal to 0. So we see that negative x1 plus x2 minus x3 must be equal uh, to 0. What's the simplest vector that satisfies this? Well, 1, 1, 0 would work. We'll get negative 1 plus 1. Uh, minus zero, that's equal to zero. And then what is a vector that's orthogonal to this? What about if we just uh, flip the x1, the x1 value, we'll get negative one, one, and then uh, here, what will, what will have to happen? Well, we'll have one plus one minus x3, so x3 will have to be uh, two to compensate, to compensate for that. And taking taking a look here, um, if we normalize both of these, this will be multiplied by 1 over root 6, this will be multiplied by 1 over root 2, and if both of these comp uh, correspond to lambda equals 4, we should see them in the second two columns of our matrix Q. Right here, I am, I'm seeing exactly uh, what we've found, and so B should be our answer, but let's make sure that this first vector this first vector uh, does work. Okay, so solving solving a minus lambda i for lambda equal equals to one that gives us two one negative one one two one negative one one two. Okay, let's uh, add let's add row three to row two that gives us zero three three which can become zero one one. Let's subtract row two from uh, both row one and row three. That gives us a zero here, minus two, so one and negative one, zero, one, one, negative one. We can use row uh, one to set row three equal to zero. 
and there is our solution there. And since this is uh, an eigenspace with only one vector, uh, with only one eigenvector corresponding to it, because the multiplicity of lambda equals one is just one, we can solve for our normal eigenvector, which is one, negative one, one, just like we are expecting to find here. And you can go and check uh, to see that all of these, that all of these columns or the, the combinations of these columns are orthogonal to each other. Uh, but they, they are, and B should be our correct answer.